everybody, welcome to this September issue of Staffing Monthly, and I am really, really excited to be here. If you had a chance to watch any of the videos from last month where we took a deep dive into how do we get more candidates, and we literally scoured the globe to find some of those thought leaders in this space that can actually tell you how to do that, there was actually one particular interview that prompted me to go a little bit deeper down this thread, and that was actually the interview with David Fowle from staffing referrals who I've come to establish a great friendship with. And he said this thing, if you've not watched the interview, watch the entire thing, but he said this thing, if you really want to drive candidates, you need to be increasing your candidate referral program because job boards just, they're not cutting it completely right now. And I think we all know that. Um, but one of the things he said about that is if you want to have an effective candidate referral program, you need to have a great reputation you need to have recruiters or an agency that has a reputation that people actually feel comfortable referring right if if your candidates don't like you or don't think you do a good job they're not going to refer you to a lot of people you know and certainly not the closest quality talent that they know so that's why i wanted to go a little bit deeper on this and find out how do you actually build that part that prerequisite that foundation how do we build out that reputation that is referable and so i obviously did my homework and i found out who is the thought leader that actually is the expert in this space, not an expert like the expert in the space of actually you know building a reputation of being a great recruiter is none other than adam conrad the founder of great recruiters and I am excited to have him here today because he launched this. This probably wasn't even his problem, but he took it upon himself to solve this problem. He recognized that the recruiting industry has a bad rap. They've got a negative stigma about it. And there's something funny that I'm going to share uh, just a little bit later about this. But he recognized this and he wants to change that. And that's the core mission of great recruiters is to help the good recruiters, you, the people that are great in this industry, shine and be shown for what you're your talents are and be referable. So Adam, man, I, I'm i stoked to have you here. I, I've, I've heard so many great things about you and what you're doing. And I just want to, to welcome you to, to Staffing Monthly. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks, Dan. And I'm, I'm glad to see Staffing Monthly up and running again. Uh, I'm, I'm fired up about this. I think what you're doing is equally awesome for the industry. Um, you know, so I really appreciate you having me on. And, uh, you know, David Falwell, dear friend of mine as well. And uh, I think, you know, when we first met, uh, re reviews and referrals go hand in hand. And yeah. in this world that we're in, as consumers, what is the number one thing that we turn to to help us make decisions about goods and services and things we're going to do? We trust reviews. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love to get in it with you. I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about this industry. I've been doing it for 22 years. And, um, uh, you know, I have my own personal story of why I started this as well. So uh, just happy to jump into it with you. But thanks for having De me on, Dan. Def definitely going to want to get into that. But you're, you're, so, you're so spot on. And, and everyone that's watching this right now, I want, you, I want you to see if you can relate to this situation. I've literally gone online to buy something. I've known exactly what I wanted down to the actual make and model of the product. I've known I've been perfectly comfortable with the pricing and I'm not really price shopping. I'm just looking for the thing. And then I will go to the reviews and I don't know what it is about me. Even if it has like a four star review, I literally look for the one star reviews, the two star, like I, I sort them by that because I want to see what the negative reviews are. And there, there's been a number of times where I've literally talked myself out of buying the thing I went there for just because there was a lot of people that gave a one star or two star review. And I think that's, that's probably what we also see in the recruiting industry, right, Adam? Yeah, I mean, we're we're about there's a so with what we're doing, there's a lot of places where people are venting, right? There's a lot of third party review sites. It's anonymous hmm. stuff. If you think about our human nature, our human nature is to want to get all those negative experiences off our chest. It makes us feel better. And so really, if you're not asked for that feedback, you're going to go find the place that that's comfortable to you to go ahead and vent. And I think that's why a lot of these sites have a lot of negativity. Uh, but if all the negativity is out there, even though if it represents only a, a portion of the industry, uh, it's the overwhelming thing that people see. And so, you know, for us, it's be proactive in that approach and, and take control. So go from that reactive model 
of just waiting for the negative feedback to come in and, and react to it and try to figure out who said it to being proactive and taking that proactive approach. So for us, we want to capture all the positive stuff. There's always going to be negative reviews, and I agree with you. I think when it comes to a product, um, what's interesting, when you read reviews, it's like, what is it about? Is it about the product or is it about the experience? You know, so as you read those reviews, you do, you get a better picture um, of, of why somebody provided the response they did. But uh, I agree with you. I don't go to four-star restaurants, right? Maybe, maybe a fast food chain, but I'm looking for, you know, four, six, four, seven, four, yeah. eight. Those are the, the great places. Yeah, it, it, it's so true. And so, and I think that's a big deal because when you're making a recommend, when you're a human being and you're making a recommendation of something, it's your reputation. It's your, it's your word. It's your credibility. You know, and I, if, if I'm like, oh, you know, if someone's like, hey, do you know a good recruiter? And that's a, maybe doesn't get asked a lot because of the reputation, but like, hey, do you know a good recruiter? Like, if I really know someone that I trust, I'm going to say, yeah, the best. Like, you got to go see this girl or this guy. Like, they're amazing. But if I don't, I'm going to be like, ah, you know, I really don't know somebody that I would refer you to, right? Like, because right. you, you don't want to put your reputation and credibility out there. So let's, well, let's just, let's take a step back. Obviously, you, you teased your story, but you also said something, where do people go to vent? And I saw something on your website that it was amusing. It brought, it brought a very cynical smile to my face and you call out Google recruiters are and see how the Google algorithm finishes that sentence in the results. And it's downright awful. Like it's recruiters are shady. Recruiters are not to be trusted. Recruiters are sociopaths. I'm like, what is going on here? Right? So that's, that's the stigma that this industry has. So Tell me, man, what is your personal story? Like, why did you get into this then? Yeah, so, I mean, I, you know, Dan, I cut my teeth as a recruiter. It's how I got in this industry. And, you know, I kind of have a, a story of two tales in this, in this industry. My first three years, I was, I wouldn't say I was trash or shady, but I was, I was of little value to the job seeker because I was really taught to just be transactional, uh, call people, are you interested in this job? It was very short-sighted about what my agenda is and the placements that I was told that I need to make. Uh, and I kind of became disenchanted because that's a that's a burnout, right? You also see, you know, recruiters are burned out because yeah. when you're doing that, you're starting over every single time. Um, it's tough. It's like Groundhog's Day. You never get ahead. And then I, I got with a firm that I really learned that you build relationships for life. Opportunity does exist everywhere. You create those connections. And that's where I learned about you know, 50% of my business was done through referrals, which is why when I met David and staff referrals, like it was so connected because referrals were the core of my business. And so as a recruiter, and I felt I was a pretty good recruiter, um, I learned to try to, you can only place maybe 5% of the people you talk to, but you have 100% of an opportunity to create value with everyone that you, that you engage with. And if somebody took the opportunity to call me back to want to have that experience, I made it my point to try to make value in that conversation. And so the, the result was I had people that I had never placed who knew the way that I would treat them and treat their candidates. So back to that reputation, who would refer people to me? Hey, look, I don't know if Adam can help you out, but I, I can tell you this, he at least gonna, he's going to point you in the right direction. So for me, my, my job got easier. And for every recruiter out there, if your job's not getting easier, the longer you're in this industry, you're doing it wrong. You just are because you need to build the relationships. You need to be, you know, put their agenda ahead of your own. So back to like why I did this, because every recruiter, okay, when you're, when, when you reach out, I was in the IT industry, highly competitive, a lot of recruiters, a lot of people that didn't know what they were doing. Um, that reputation affected me, even though it didn't represent me. And you, realized there was you just no, got, you got scooped up in it. You get everyone gets scooped up in it, right? In yeah. my own network, they knew, but as I'm reaching out and engaging with new candidates, like they don't know me from Adam, right? So for me, That's I knew that in order to really truly improve the candidate experience, to improve the recruiter reputation to help the industry kind of evolve into actually doing what everyone says on their website, but failed at it because obviously yeah. if they did it, we wouldn't have these issues. Um, build great recruiters. And really it was about 
what are my candidates, the people that I'm engaging with, what do they think about the service that I'm providing? Because behavior exists at the individual level. Candidates don't refer staffing firms and candidates don't refer people they trust. Candidates refer recruiters and recruiters is where the relationship and the trust is. Um, and so I think that's where your reputation, you need a way to, to stand out. And so that's what great recruiters did is to help recruiters get real-time feedback them a lot of digital assets to help share with their prospective candidates and profiles to say, hey, look, Dan, I know you've probably been called by a lot of recruiters, right? But hey, I'm different. In fact, don't take it from me. Here's what my, here's what people I've worked with said about me. And so how do you build trust in an industry where trust doesn't exist and we're in this digital world? So how do you build that trust? It's through transparency. And I think that's what reviews provide is transparency into what other people experienced working with you. And that's really where great recruiters began. So I love that, man. There's, there's just so much good in there. And I love that you're taking this up for the industry. But one, one parallel I want to draw that I think should be able to resonate with everybody nowadays is you as a recruiter, if you want to not be swept up with all the negative stigma that's out there that even Google has picked up on, you have to stand out. You have to have your own personal brand, whether you're an independent recruiter or working for an agency, like you have to have your personal brand. And it's almost like influencer marketing. I mean, that's what influencers do. They really focus a lot of effort on making sure that their brand is tight, that everyone, that it's rock solid that people connect with it they engage with it and it's all about that experience so and i think that's the way like I mean, if you if you create an amazing experience for your candidates they're going to feel good about it and they will refer you the, you will have a good reputation but how do you do that like let's take that even step back and that's that's the question i really want to ask you today is how do you actually create that candidate experience that's going to be something that people want to give positive testimonials about yeah, no, really good question. And it's funny, it's it's kind of um, my own experience in the industry and just talking to other recruiters and talking to candidates, I had a bad experience. The, the answer is actually hidden in the name uh, of GREAT recruiters. So GREAT is an acronym for Genuine, Responsive, Experienced, Advisor, and Transparent. And if you think about it, what are candidates looking for? What are you looking for when somebody's going to help you with such an important thing like your career change? You want somebody who's genuine, who's putting your agenda ahead that and a genuine person is going to seek to understand and want to understand who you are and how you can help. They're not going to make false promises and just try to jam a job down your throat. They're responsive, right? That's huge. Uh, responsiveness is probably an area where you have the biggest opportunity as a recruiter to just hurt your reputation, right? By not being responsive. And responsiveness doesn't mean following up every 24 hours. It's understanding Daniel, what, what, what is good for you? What's a good follow-up? How often should I stay in touch? And you look at being experienced, right? You need to have experience and knowledge of your job, your industry, your clients, the culture, all of those things. And without those, you can't be an advisor. And the great recruiters out there have taken a role from just being a recruiter to becoming people's advisors. People are coming there for you know, insight and, and they're looking for advice and guidance. And then you have to be transparent through the process, right? You can't, you can't um, hide anything. You got to put it all on the table. Research is at our hands. As candidates, we are consumers. And as job seekers, we still have that consumer mindset. So with great recruiters, you know, that is what's being measured every time a recruiter gets reviewed. The candidates reviewing against those five core attributes, and, and those are the things that when you know what's being measured, you know what behaviors you need to exhibit. So through our platform, we have clients that are like, okay, here's our average rating for responsiveness. We're a 4.8. This recruiter is, you know, a 4.2. That puts a spotlight to say, what can we do to help that individual? Not do group training, but what can that individual do different? What are our recruiters at the top doing differently than the recruiter down here? And when you think about hiring new recruiters and being remote, how do you stay connected to how they're driving your brand? We bring that all to light and we put it in a simple, easy way for recruiting managers and recruiters to, to, to drive those behaviors that create great experiences for the candidates. Dude, 
I, so I had no idea. Like I honestly, and I, I just had this epiphany, epiphany when you were saying that to me, because I, I understand the essence of what great recruiters is and the personal brand and showcasing their views and, and creating social proof, right? Because that's so important in, in, in the consumer society today. And I want to talk about the responsive thing here first, but I want to come back to something that you just said about the management training and development piece of it, because that's an area that's lacking in this industry. But I'm going to, I'm going to come back to that. So responsiveness, just being responsive. And because we live in such a convenient driven society, and it used to be called the microwave society because you could cook something in a few minutes, but now it's the Amazon society where you can click a button and have something delivered to your door in four hours, right? It's like, we want things now. We want instant gratification and like candidates, clients, whatever, like their time is like dog years. Like if you wait an hour to get back to someone, it feels like seven hours. And if you wait a day, it's like a week. Like it's, it's crazy. And here's what happens in the, in the candidate's mind. If you take a little bit of time because they're now driven, they feel like the service is not good. You know, and I just had a conversation with a gentleman just a couple of hours ago talking about Indeed. And he's like, their service is awful. He's like, I ask questions and I'm like, you know, it is right. Like they're not, they don't actually have the greatest customer service. And you, but here's, here's the thing. I'm not so much into the tribe of indeed that I didn't want to come to their defense. Right. Right. But if they, if he would have said, Oh, you know, uh, staffing referral service isn't great. Right. I'd have been like, well, hold on now. Wait a second. You know, have you talked to David? Like, you know, Joey over there, like, wait a second. Like I, that doesn't seem right to me. Like I'm going to be out there being an ambassador for them because right. I've got a level of trust and connection with them. And I right. know that this, so, so that you had a different experience. You, you had a different experience. Right. And so you said, wait, what's, what's different. How do we resolve that? So even when you have a bad experience, just, just like, it's okay to have a bad experience. It's what do you do with it? So when you think about responsiveness and you provide feedback, the worst thing you can do is not take action on it, especially uh, if it's if it's negative. That's the because, worst. Right? But if somebody has a negative experience and they intervene or, or somebody else says, how can we make that better? Have you talked to David? Go talk to David. Then they realize maybe it's a misunderstanding. Maybe there was misaligned expectations. It's usually a communication thing. And if you seek to understand, you can solve it. And then a lot of times when you have a bad experience, but somebody made it great, you have you become a brand advocate. Right. You become an ambassador for them. 100%. And you were, you were so right. And on the flip side of that, how many times do we see people or companies out there that get a bad review and they, they do, they ignore it or even worse, they delete it. And it's like, wait a second here, hold on. It might be a bad review and you might not agree with it, but here's the deal. This is somebody that cared enough to take the time to share their feedback with you. That is an opportunity. That is a golden opportunity for you to connect with somebody, you know what's worse? Now, they're both bad. Obviously, having public negative reviews can change sentiment, but if you respond to it appropriately and convert that person to be a strong ambassador, like you just said, that's great. But even worse than that is where they don't say it publicly and they go tell everyone that they know, don't go deal with this company or don't deal with this person. And if they're not giving you the feedback, you don't have the opportunity to positively impact that sentiment. So that's, it's a missed opportunity if you don't respond. In that, in the way that you just described, that's an amazing is. point. The biggest missed opportunity is not asking. Yeah, that's it. You just nailed it. If you create a negative experience and you don't even ask for that feedback, believe me, we're gonna vent as human beings. Yeah. I'm gonna tell my friends, don't talk to that staffing firm. They were garbage. Whatever it is, I had the worst experience. We love to share it ten times more than positive stuff. It's just. Um, it's it's what we are. It's our human nature. And so, like, get ahead of it. And with great yeah. recruits, you can get ahead of it. You know, I, I look at, don't wait to the end of the year to do an end of year survey to ask the people you successfully placed what they thought. Well, one, it's a very small segment of the people you actually engaged with your brand. Two, you, you've helped them. So it's most likely going to be positive. And it's good to be recognized for that. And I love it. But it's not a replacement for having a process in place like great recruiters and experience management that's measuring interactions in real time. Because if you're not asking, you have no idea what's being said. And, and if, you, if you have a few people say something, you know, maybe there's some merit there. Maybe yeah. there's an opportunity to peel the onion back a little bit, seek to understand 
you know, be a little, you know, have a little humility and say, okay, is there something that we're doing? Because if these three people feel this way, maybe others are feeling that way and just aren't sharing it. So 100% right. It is a massive opportunity for self-reflection and continuous improvement. And the market moves fast. We always need to be improving. Like we can't, we'll, we'll never, as soon as we think that we figured it out and we take that figured outness to market, we're going to be complacent and then we will become replaced, you know? And yeah. I, I think another missed opportunity before I jump into that management piece that I want to drill into that was an epiphany for me for what your tool can do is if agencies really understood the concept, like most recruiting agencies will pay a ton of money to Indeed or Career Builder or Monster or LinkedIn Recruit, all these things, right? Recruiting tools. And they pay that money because those organizations have an audience. They, they pumped a lot of marketing dollars into getting an audience, getting attention, getting traffic. And then we pay those people for that traffic and we don't realize what the impact of all of those people you just said five percent might get placed can you imagine if you gave a hundred people an amazing experience yeah you only placed five but can you imagine if 95 people were out there saying great things about you you know like what would that do for your brand how that would just you would create this organic candidate flow that would just be finding you not necessarily through indeed not through linkedin they would just be finding you because you're taking the time to influence your brand through the, the best organic marketing channel you have and the one that you've got the most control over, right? The, yes, 100%. The worst thing that could happen, the worst thing that could happen to the staffing industry is for the candidates and clients to view us as a commodity. Because uh, when you're viewed as a commodity, it means there's a lack of value. Yeah. And for me, there's a ton of value. I've seen lives change because of recruiters, because of staffing companies. There is a lot of amazing things, but the mass volume, it, it, there's a number of things that you can unpack with the job boards. Uh, but when you, <laughs> when you talk about the mass volume, um, you know, how do you help other people understand that it's not a commodity, not all staffing firms are created equal and not all recruiters. And the recruiters are a representative of the staffing firm's value that they put on people. If the recruiters aren't valued, how are they going to value you as a, as a candidate? How are they going to value you as a placement? You're just a number. You're just a dollar sign, right? So I understand those staffing firms that value, invest uh, in their recruiters and look at them as an extension of their brand and want to celebrate them are the ones that are going to continue to grow and flourish in this new modern era of recruiting. Those that don't, that want to be high, that are afraid of them getting poached and all that, they're, they're dinosaurs and they're going to go away because yeah. once the candidates, the clients understand who the great ones are, if you know who the best is, you don't need the rest. That's, that, that, is a, that is a true statement right there. I, I love that. And speaking of commoditization, the reason that Google thinks our industry is the way that it is and the reason that we're looked at as a commoditized industry is because we have untrained people doing the job there, that is a gross neglect of this industry and i i love this industry i love the community of staffing but it, it is a it is a negative mark on, on most agencies don't invest in training their people to be professionals and that's and that's when they aren't professionals and they aren't trained to do that job like the expert they act like a commodity which gives us all a negative stigma which is why i want to come back to that point that's brilliant. I didn't realize that agencies could use your platform as a tool to say, hey, I've got these top performers and this is what their rating is and I've got somebody else here and, and basically identify an opportunity for training and development that is yeah. customized to that person. And that adds so much value to that person. They will retain in your organization longer, but it adds immense value to you as an organization. So Talk to me a little bit about that. Have you worked with a client that used it for that case? Because I think that's amazing. We have we have clients. So when we launched, um, we launched and our tag was, uh, you know, increase recruiter performance through real-time insights. And it all went back to what we built originally. The public stuff was a result because you can't have a public positive reputation unless you fix what's under the hood, Right. And so if you don't know what's happening inside your organization and you aren't driving operational excellence within your organization, your reviews aren't going to reflect that to even post positively. So actually where we began was 
getting the feedback from that training development perspective. We have a knowledge base to share tips, tricks, best practices. Uh, for organizations that get it, that have training and development teams dedicated, they're plugged into great recruiters. And so as new recruiters are going through their process, we're actually helping them to get up to speed faster because they're actually able to read the comments of the behaviors that are exhibited by those top performers and, and, and learn how to duplicate it. And if they're falling short in those areas, you know, that's where we can put a spotlight to help them grow. So that's the beauty of what we've done is we have a very strong operational platform that's used for training development, you know, driving into the culture awards, recognition, issue resolution, all of doing that well then results into the positive self-promotion type things that we provide. So um, it's really where we began, but I think everybody sees the public facing results of it, not that's happening in the background. So we have a lot of clients that are, are using a hundred percent for that as they're growing and managing their teams. So I, so I think it's brilliant. I, I've got a question, but I need to set it up for a second because I got to tie it back to the theme last month was how do we get more and better people? Like that was it. And then we, we explored the candidate referral piece. The underlying tenant of a great referral program is having, you know, an experience and a reputation and trust and credibility that's worth referring to, you know, and all of that. So, so my question to you is how does, like, what is the step-by-step -step? super high overview, but what is the step-by-step -step? if I'm, let's say I'm a staffing agency for a second and I've got a team of five recruiters and I say, Hey, I really want to lean into this. I want to have all of them have a great reputation. Like just walk me through very high overview step-by-step. -step. Like what do I really need to do to make that happen? Well, I mean, I, th I think the first thing that you need to do is to start asking for feedback on the experience they're creating. I mean, that's number one, right? So ask for feedback. Um, but and how do you do like where, like do, like surveys like Survey Monkey? Do you do the, is it like an actual conversation? Like how do you what's the best way to ask for feedback there? Uh, for us, it's it's get great recruiters and use the platform because it's <laughs> it's really simple. Touche. You know? Well well played, sir. But but I do. I mean, it was built for that. It was built for the feedback for that. However, you do it though, get feedback. I used okay. to use surveys. Uh, when you use other platforms that aren't built for feedback in that way, I mean, there's so much more that we're doing. But if you're not asking, at least ask. Measure yeah. the experience people are having. How is your application process? How is your experience with your recruiters? You know, um, I, I think what gets lost, though, if you do it through another platform that isn't set up to help you get that out there publicly, then you have a gap. But that's number one, is you have to make sure that, honestly, everybody's website says like, just read your website. What commitment are you making to candidates? What mm -hmm. are the commitments that you're making? And are you measuring against those commitments? And if you're not, that's step one, don't move forward. Do not pass go. Make sure that you're living up to the commitments that you've already put out there. We wouldn't have an industry reputation issue if we were. Sure. So my guess is there are companies that aren't, and sometimes it's not companies, maybe it's just individuals, but when individuals create a bad experience, under a brand name, that's their impression of the brand. That's true, so, and that's not a guess, that's a, that's a fact. That's a fact. And so if you have huge teams, whatever it's five, six, whatever, um, doesn't matter, 50, 100, 200, you have a lot of people, recruiters are your number one marketer for your brand. They're talking to more people, 100%. representing your company than anybody else. So you gotta make sure that's sound. From from there, it's about how do you share and, and 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 leverage that. I mean, testimonials are great. How do you share that? How do you create social proof? Um, we do it in a way to help with you know showing that it's coming from a third party, right? Everybody has testimonials on their website. Uh, if you don't, you should. But how do I know it's not marketing content, right? So I want to see that it's coming from a trusted source. I want to see that it's not manufactured content, um, and that's really around being transparent around what your process is, what, what process you take to ensure the quality of your services. And then once all that is good, it's about, then you build that trust and, and, and you nailed it from the beginning. People refer people to people. They're not gonna refer somebody if, it's, if, if they don't trust them because it's your own personal reputation on the line. If I recommend somebody to you and they're, and they're not great, you know, are you ever gonna trust me again to give you a recommendation? Or if I send you to a bad restaurant, right? That's just the human nature side of it. 
It's true. And obviously David referred us to each other, right? And he did that because he knows and likes and trusts you. And I want to believe that he knows and likes and trusts me, you know? So like, and, but if, if I've been like, Hey, who do I need to go to to talk to about, you know, building a referable program and getting a great reputation. And if he didn't have the level of respect for you, he would have been like, I don't, there's no one I can recommend. Right. Right. But he gave you a glowing recommendation, which automatically put me in the camp of, I was basically, I, I was, I was borrowing his trust and respect for you because of how he introduced us. He's like, this is the guy. Like, if you want to talk to someone, like, this is, this is the person that you need to talk to. And he's great. I'm like, so I went into the conversation being like, man, this guy's great. And, and, you're, and you're backing it up with this interview. But so that's how, that's how referrals work. And I, I want to, I want to drive this home. And I got one last question. Um, and then I have an ask for you a favor maybe, but um, if you, if, if you're a viewer and you're watching this, just put yourself in a candidate position and you've got two different people that you can work with as a recruiter. One of them has a lot of reviews and they're a four and a half star rated recruiter testimonial after testimonial that talks about the experience that the candidate went through. And it's amazing. And the other recruiter doesn't have any of that. They just got a name and a contact us. Who are you going to want to call first? I don't know about you, but for me, it's the one that I can see the social proof. Like, I feel like someone has had a positive experience enough to share it through testimonials. So that increases my confidence and my chance of success with that same recruiter. So the, the one, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. I, I wanted to say my biggest pitch, everyone says it's tough to find great talent. It's not, it's to get them to call you back. That's the challenge. You just said it, there's job boards, there's everywhere, there's choices, there's everything. Like there is not a shortage of ways for us to find talent. The challenge is how do I get them to call you back? And they don't call you back because of the reputation. And if they don't have the reputation, why are they going to trust you? Because they've just been burnt by the last three people. So you nailed it like 100%. It's not a, hey, look at me, look at me. It's a, hey, look, I'm not like the rest. Here's the social proof of what other people said. It's building, it's creating that transparency to build that trust, to increase the callbacks, because that's the name. How do I get them to call me back? Sorry to interrupt, but you no, you're, and that's the you're, point. You're spot on with that. You're exactly right. It's not hard to find talent. It is. It's hard to get like that. hundred percent. You, you nailed it right there. That's exactly right. And that's the frustration part with recruiters because they will make hundreds of calls, you know, but, there's one last point I want to say, and then there's a question yeah. I feel like we didn't, we didn't ask or I didn't hear you mention through this building reputation piece that I want to dig into quickly, but I feel like it's the recruiters that actually care about their candidates and they care about the positive impact that they're making in this industry and the lives of the people they serve that are going to be the ones that create this level of brand because they care enough to do it. So I feel like inherently, if people see all of these great testimonials and recommendations and, and you get referred to these people, you automatically pick up on that sentiment that this is someone that cares enough about being an expert or a professional in their industry to go this extra mile where maybe someone that's not seeking out testimonials or not putting their positive brand reputation out there, maybe they don't care as much. Maybe they are just transactional, like, you know, the first couple of years of your career. Um, so I, I feel like that, but here's a question I got to ask. Because when I think about referability and all of this stuff, like then there's the term net promoter score or NPS. And, and David mentioned this last month too. And the question is as simple as how likely are you to refer this company or this recruiter scale of one to 10? And I didn't hear that come up once in what you said. So what, where does that, where does that fit into this? If at all. So I have, a, I have a number of opinions on NPS. That's a whole different conversation that we can dig into. Okay, but let me fair. ask you this. Um, I'm a recruiter and I come to you and I say, Daniel, I have an NPS of uh, 54. And somebody else says, Daniel, I'm a, I'm a recruiter and I have a rating of 4.7. Which one do you understand? Uh, I see what you did there. You're right. No, the rating. Because because. Amazon does it, Google does it, Yelp does it, Uber does it. Like we get the five star scale. Like that's just that is absolutely just completely penetrated our our daily life. So I okay. You, so and if you think about where NPS came from, it's an important thing. It's a Likert scale, right? It's zero to ten, and it's simply saying, 
are you likely to recommend nine and 10? Are you a passive, you know, seven and eight and all the rest of the detractors? And the focus was, is to focus on the detractors. And I think the problem with the NPS is alone, anything can be a measurement, but it's what you do with it. And I think when you're just focused on an NPS and you're going to ask for feedback, I do it in a way that the consumer is going to be able to ingest it. And we ask NPS as well because we have customers that are measuring it. And so we'll ask, you know, how do you feel? What's your likelihood to recommend? And that's it. The challenge is, though, when you look at NPS and you look at what happens of the people that actually say, yes, I'd recommend, um, it is a very, very small percentage of people that actually follow through. So what do you do with the information? So I think NPS, uh, I if you're using it, whatever it is, it's a measurement tool. Understand what it is, understand what you can do with it. My piece is from a consumer standpoint, if I'm gonna go ahead and uh, measure something, I'm gonna provide in a way that the consumer understands what to do with it. And I understand that a 4.7, I get it because it's where it is in my life. I don't sell based on an NPS. It's an internal measurement system. Um, it's just not the same as what we're doing. It's not relatable to the candidate and everything you do that's consumer facing has to be related to the consumer. It's, it's brilliant. It makes a ton of sense. So, so here's my ask. I, I feel like, you know, we're, we're winding this down. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but staffing monthly is going to be rolling out in the near future, a product spotlight section of the digital magazine, where instead of like an interview format, we actually do a demo. We, we actually sure. do a, a recorded demo of the tools and resources that serve our industry, and we just walk people through it. So would, would you be open to doing that with great recruiters and, and actually sharing the screen, walking us through it, and, and, and let me kind of poke around that side of it from my staffing perspective and showcasing it through a, a product showcase? Yeah, definitely. Awesome, man. I'd be grateful for that. Adam, man, I... Ah, I, w one, I'm so glad to be connected with you, man. I, I just, uh, I can tell that you're, you're of the industry and you want to serve this industry, which is great. I'm glad that you were able to make time to, to get that content into this month. I think it's a big foundational piece to improve your reputation if you want to refer and get more candidates. So how can, how can people connect with you if they want to find out more about you or great recruiters or learn more about the things they should be doing to improve their referability, their reputation, their, 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 I guess, ratings and reviews, like what do they, how do they get with you? How do they get that information? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, our website's a great resource. We've got a lot of great resources there. So you can always visit our website, greatrecruiters.com. You can reach out to me directly, connect with me on LinkedIn, um, uh, you know, under great recruiters, or you can email me directly, adam at greatrecruiters.com. I mean, anyway, I, I'm here to uh, support the transformation this industry is going through, the modernization, I think, Firms are being overwhelmed with all these different things and technology and sorting it out. Um, the beauty is, you know, I wasn't the outside coming in when we created this. Like I lived it. I know it. Um, and so, you know, I'm always passionate about making connections, referring people. So if there's any questions that somebody has just that want to pick my brain, I've been in a lot of different roles. I mean, I'm always happy to talk about it. Obviously, I believe the recruiter is going to survive. Uh, the job boards didn't take us down. LinkedIn didn't take us down, right? I don't think the other they, technology is. Yeah. There is a place for it, although I think we're going we're gonna to shift, right? We're going to shift and be more consulted and more advisors. Um, we, that's a we, whole other piece we can get into. <laughs> we will. It's true. And you're right. AI is the next threat, right? And it won't take us down. If you understand how AI is impacting the industry, you can't screen out the recruiter because the recruiter actually has abstract thought and they can actually make deliberations based on what they're seeing in front of them. AI at the very best can only scan data points. And right now anybody's resume can say anything as we recruiters know. And it's what you actually talk to the candidate about. You're going to learn what they're really about, what their capabilities and limitations and strengths and weaknesses really are through conversation. And it's AI is a long way away of, of getting there, if, if ever. So I, I agree. And one, one resource I want to point out on, on your, your website, because I think you, you might have um, not, I think you might have done a disservice and been a little bit too modest with it, is you actually have an ebook on there that is about the candidate experience, and it's the playbook. And the whole, 
the whole shift of our industry that you were just talking about is making a positive candidate experience. If you focus on that right there and improving the candidate experience, you're going to get the ratings. You're going to get the testimonials, which means it's going to drive candidate referrals. And, and you're going to have a, an entire army of brand ambassadors out there talking about why your agency is different or why you're different as a recruiter. So I'm going to put on this page right here uh, a link where people can just go check out that ebook, The Candidate Experience, and just learn from that. Because I think that's yeah. a pretty big piece. And that's what we're, some of the stuff we're going to get into in the next couple of months is how do we improve candidate experience, things we can do. But um, yeah. Adam, man, grateful to have you here. I, I think this was wonderful. And I'll reach back out to you when we can actually do a product spotlight on, on your platform and bring that to the, to the viewers. Yeah, no, I definitely appreciate it. And there's also a blog on NPS uh, if anybody's interested in reading our perspective on that piece. Uh, so feel free to check that out. But no, really appreciate it. I love what you're doing. Uh, I'm glad to see this is uh, back in action and I'm, I'm just really happy to be part of it. So thanks for reaching out. Awesome.